Good afternoon, everyone. So our topic for this is about employment law and employees' rights. So uh, kindly uh, listen carefully because majority of the questions for comprehensive exam is focused on employment law and employees' rights. No? Uh, in conjunction with, uh, of course, with... Um, ethics and so on. Okay, to discuss with us. Yes, uh, mga sirs and madam, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. So, magandang hapon pa ulit sa inyong lahat. Ako po ay magre-report muli. So, klaro po ang aking boses. So, thumbs up naman po kung klaro po yung boses ko. Thank you. So, proceed ko na po. Together with me. So right now, together with me is Ms. Agravante and Mr. Montoya, and we will be discussing employment law and employee rights. So this is a very interesting topic, no? Because we will be dealing with the rights, syempre, nating mga employees and responsibilities of our employers. So actually, this is a very long and comprehensive topic, but we have tried to summarize it and incorporate only the vital details po para mas madali nating makuha at maintindihan. So, next po. So, sa part na to, nag-summarize pa kami. Um, so, I will be discussing the first part, which I will tackle the terms and conditions in employment. So, ano ba ang mga main sources ng employment law? So, sino-sino ba ang mga protected dito? Also, the employee representation, yung mga rights natin to self-organization and collective bargaining. And lastly, yung discrimination. So for the second part, Ms. Agravante will be discussing the leaves of employees. So what are the types of leaves that are legally intended for our Philippine employees and wages at benefits. So, and lastly, Mr. Montoya will cover data privacy protection. Ano ba yung mga procedures that applies to employment re in relation to the complaints? And lastly, yung safety working conditions natin. So, next po. So, unang-una po, ano ba ang main sources of the employment law? So, basically, it is the Labor Code of the Philippines. So, Labor Code of the Philippines is a legal code that determines all employment practices and labor relations in the Philippines. So, ito po yung primary sources of employment law natin. With this constitution, it provides us the guidance on our rights. So, it protects us from our employers to ensure that there are no unfair treatments and exploitation in our work. So, it was enacted on Labor Day during uh, on the year 1974 by President Ferdinand Marcos. So nowadays, labor code is supplemented by numerous employment-related re legislations, decisions, and rulings from the Supreme Courts. And of course, the administrative issuances from the DOLE is guided by this. So these several provisions were created based on the labor code that is beneficial sa lahat ng mga manggagawa natin. So sino-sino po ba yung protected under this law? What types of workers are protected under this law? So next, Ma'am Shin. So mapa-regular employee ka man, project employee, seasonal employee, casual, casual or temporary, or even probationary employees, lahat po tayo ay protected under this law. So now, let's proceed. Ano-ano ba yung mga rights natin under this law? So first is the security of the tenure. So under the Section 18, Article 2 of the Labor Code, Every employee shall be assured and guaranteed with the security of tenure. So this simply means that employees cannot be dismissed unless may just or authorized cause. So an employee cannot be simply terminated because hindi siya gusto ng boss niya dahil sa itsura niya or dahil sa ugali niya. They can be terminated from the service only for a valid cause supported by a substantial evidence and after due process where they are afforded the opportunity to be heard and present their defense. So second po is we have equal opportunities, equal work opp opportunities for all. So the state shall protect labor, promote full, full employment, providing and implementing equal work, opportunity for all regardless ng gender natin, ng race, ng creed. So even may disability tayo and regulate 
and regulate relations between employees and employers. So, with this, nagkaroon tayo ng RA 10.524. So, an act expanding the position reserves for persons with disability, amending for the purpose of Republic Act 7277 as amended. So, otherwise known as the, Mar as the Magna Carta for persons with disability. So, under this act, ibig sabihin po, no person with disability shall be denied access to opportunities for suitable employment. So, a qualified employee with disability shall be subject to the same terms and conditions of employment and the same compensation, privileges, benefits, incentives, allowance as a qualified, able-bodied person. So, next po. So, under this... Uh, under this law, kailangan po ang isang government agency ay mag-reserve po ng at least 1% po ng of all positions in all government agencies shall be reserved for persons with disability and also for private corporation with more than 100 employees are also encouraged to reserve at least 1% of all positions for persons with disability. So next po is for our gender. Next po, Ma'am Shane. So, we also have RA6725. So, an act strengthening the prohibition on the discrimination against women with respect to terms and conditions of employment. So, it shall be unlawful for any employer to discriminate against any woman with respect to terms and conditions of employment solely on account of her sex. So, for instance, yung favoring a male employee over female employee with respect to promotion, training opportunities, study and scholarship grants. So, yung iba din, payment of a lesser compensation. So, including wages, salary, and other form of enumeration and fringe to a, to a female employee as against the male employee for for work of equal value. So next po, lastly, based on the Article 137, minimum employable age, so no child below 15 years of age shall be employed except when he works directly under the sole responsibility of his parents or guardians and his Employment does not in any way interfere with his schooling. So, any person also between 15 to 18 may be employed for such number of hours and such period of days as determined by the Secretary of Labor and Employment in appropriate regulations. And no employer po shall discriminate against any person in respect to terms and conditions of employment on account po of his age. So, next po, Ma'am Shane. So we also have the rights to self-organization and collective bargaining. So it is supplemented by the RA 9481, an act strengthening the workers' constitutional rights to self-organization, amending the purpose of presidential decree number 442 as amended otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines. So it is the right po of workers and employees to form join or assist any unions po organizations or organi or associations for the purpose po of collected of collective bargaining and negotiation and for mutual aid and protection so every worker has the right to self organizations all worker po may join a union for the purpose of collective bargaining so ano po ba yung collective bargaining so ang collective bargaining po is referred to as the uh, a process or neg or negotiations between an employer or organization and a group of employees who are members of a uh, trade union. So marami siyang advantages. Una, pro-employee siya. So yung uh, yung collective bargaining po employees who normally will not have the means and confidence to fight for their rights if they are not part of the trade or union will have will have individuals who will challenge employers who take advantage of their workers so also another advantage ng collective bargaining it keeps abusive employees powerless and it gives protection to all employees so people who are in in favor of the collective bargaining say that in contracts signed by the employers and trade union representatives, all employees in the company will benefit from whatever conditions are stipulated in the agreement. 
So lastly, it provides security and stability. So on the part of the employees, they will be given the security of tenure. They will have they will not have to worry about getting terminated unlawfully and in this case they will have support system as well as representatives to fight for their rights as employees so this is the last slide po of my presentation miss agravante po will now discuss the rights of the employee in relation to the leaves and benefits so over to you mom shane thank you po the leave wages and benefits of employees. So leave benefits. Leave of absence is a right granted to employees not to report for work with or without pay. So um, employees who render work during the prescri prescribed hours are entitled to 15 days vacation leaves and 15 days sick leave credits annually or 1.25 days um, vacation and sick leave credits monthly. So, what are the types of leave? So, first is sick leave. So, it is granted on account of sickness or disability of the employees or any member, any member of their family, um, like parents, brothers, um, sisters, spouse, and even house help who are living with the employees. Next is vacation leave. So it is granted to employee for personal reasons, uh, the approval of which is contingent upon the necessities of the service. So vacation leave without pay is considered a gap in the service. Next is five days forced leave or mandatory leave. So employees with 10 days or more vacation leave shall be required to go on vacation leave, whether continuous or intermittent, for a minimum of five working days annually. Um, forced leave shall be forfeited if not taken during the year. So those with accumulated vacation leave of less than 10 days shall have the option to go on forced leave or not. However, Officials and employees with accumulated vacation leave of 15 days who availed of monetization for 10 days resulting in 5 days vacation leave shall still be required to go on forced leave. Next is Special Privilege Leave or SPL. So this is a leave of absence which may be um, availed for, uh, for a maximum of 3 days annually. Uh, it is also non-cumulative and non-convertible to cash. Next is maternity leave. So um, every woman in the government service who has rendered an aggregate of two or more years of service shall in addition to the vacation and sick leave granted her be entitled to maternity leave of 105 days pa. Actually, 60 days to dati na bago lang siya sa the expanded maternity leave under RA number 11210. It is an act increasing the maternity leave period to 105 days with pay and an option to extend for additional 30, day, 30 days without pay. So next is paternity leave. So um, every married male employee is entitled to paternity leave of 14 days based on RA um, 8187. Ito yung nag-grant ng 7 days na paternity leave to the father of the child. And if he is married to the female worker, he can enjoy as much as 14 days leave, um, 7 days paternity leave, and 7 days under RA 11210. So also, it is non-cumulative and non-convertible to cash. So next is Parental Leave or Solo Parent Act. Uh, seven days of leave of absence granted to a parent who has the sole custody and responsibility of the child and who has rendered at least one year of service regardless of employment status. So in order to avail the parental leave, the solo parent shall submit to the personnel division, the solo parent identification card, or certification issued 
or validated by the DSWD within the month of January every year. Next is rehabilitation leave. So it is granted to employees for disability on account of injuries sustained while in the performance of duty. So the duration, frequency, and terms of availing this leave shall be based on the recommendation of the medical authority. It may be half-day basis, intermittent schedule, or less than six months but not to exceed six months. And their absences shall not be deducted from the sick and vacation leave credits. Next is 10 days leave violence against women and their children act of 2004. So any woman employee in the government service, regardless of employment status and or whose child is a victim of violence and whose age is below 18 or above 18 but unable to care of oneself, is entitled to avail of the 10 days leave. So it may be on a continuous or intermittent matter manner to cover the days they have to attend to medical or legal concerns. Next is special leave benefits for women. So any female employee shall be entitled to special leave of a maximum of two months with full pay based on her gross monthly compensation provided she has rendered at least six months aggregate service in any or various government agencies for the last 12 months prior to undergoing surgery for gynecological disorder. So the special leave may be availed for every instance of the gynecological disorder requiring surgery. What is gynecological disorder? So this refers to disorders that would require surgical procedures such as, but not limited to, dilatation and curatage and those involving female reproductive organs such as the vagina, cervix, uh, uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, breast, and pelvic floor as certified by a competent physician. Next is study leave. So study leave it is a time off from work not exceeding six months with pay for the purpose of assisting qualified employees to prepare for their bar or board examinations to complete their master's degree. Next is special emergency leave. So um, ito ay five day leave granted to those employees directly affected by natural calamities and disasters. Last is the terminal leave. So this refers to the money value of the total accumulated leave credits of an employee based on the highest salary rate received prior to or upon retirement date or voluntary separation. Next is wages and compensation benefits. So wage is the amount to be paid to an employee in exchange for the service they rendered to their employees. So um, the compensation plan under RA number 6758 is an orderly scheme for determining rates of compensation of government personnel. So it was crafted to attract, motivate, and retain goods and qualified people to accomplish the Philippine government's mission and mandates to encourage personal and career growth and to reward good performance and length of, of service. So to achieve these goals, the CP or the com compensation plan has a mix of compensation components, namely basic pay or salaries, fringe benefits, incentives, and non-financial rewards, which provide reasonable levels of compensation packages within existing government resources and are administered equitably and fairly. So total compensation represents all financial and non-financial rewards and, and, and entitlements arising from employment relationships. So under nito ay extrinsic rewards and intrinsic rewards. So extrinsic rewards, these comprise all compensation benefits both monetary and non-monetary and received 
directly or indirectly by the employee. Under nito ay uh, direct compensation like So, these are cash compensation items which are either fixed or variable and are paid to an employee for the performance of work. So, in under nito ay ang um, fixed fringe benefits like pera, um, additional compensation, and uniform allowance. Um, next is the variable fringe benefits. Under nito ay yung hazard pay, um, honoraria, overtime pay, night shift, differential pay and subsistence allowance. In the, the in the indirect compensation naman, protective, uh, under nito yung mga health insurance, yung retirement benefits, employee compensation insurance. Next is paid leave. Kaya nang sabi ko kanina, yung mga VLSL, um, STL, maternity leave, um, solo parent leave, and monetization of leave credits. Additional services like free medical or dental clinic, mayroon din shuttle services, and free meals for hospitals. Personal development like sports activities, cultural activities, training programs, scholarship grants, and internship programs. Requisites, um, service car, mobile or cell phone, um, assigned driver or secretary, Preferred office furnishing, assigned parking space, three quarters, or sometimes newspaper subscriptions. Other benefits like um, housing loan, pag-ibig fund benefits, provident fund benefits, quarter privileges, and laundry allowances. So as in intrinsic rewards naman, these are derived from the work environment which are valued internally by an individual like quality of work life, job satisfaction, uh, challenge, personal and professional growth, opportunities or feeling of belonging, freedom to act, visionary leadership and the like. So, yun, job satisfaction, personal or career growth, and sense of belonging. So, what are the other compensation and allowances and benefits? First is step increment. So step increment is the is the increase in salary from step to step within the salary grade of a position. Um, so the grant of step increments to government personnel based on their length of service is pursuant to item eight of Joint Senate House of Representatives Resolution Number no. One as adopted under EO number 164. So officials of NGAs, including SUCs, GOCCs, GFIs, and LGUs, who are appointed in the career service under permanent status and in the non-career service whose position are found in the regular plantages ay makakarating ng ano, step increment. Next is Personal Economic Relief Allowance or PERA. So this is a monthly allowance authorized under the pertinent general provision in the Annual General Appropriations Act or GAA. It is granted to augment a government employee's pay due to the rising cost of living. Next is Uniform or Clothing Allowance. So, this is granted to cover the cost of uniform or clothing of government employees to identify them with their mother agency or office. So, ang coverage ito ay all government personnel regardless of the status of employment. Next is representation and transportation allowances or RATA. So, since RATA are privileges or benefits in the form of reimbursement of ex expenses, they are not salaries or part of basic salaries. For future or non-grant of the RATA does not constitute diminish diminution of pay. So, RATA may be spent in variable amounts per work day depending on the situation. So, entitlement thereto should not be proportionate 
to the number of work days in a month inclusive of regular and special holidays falling on work days. Next is year-end bonus and cash gift. So these are intended as year-end premiums to government personnel for a satisfactory and dedicated service. So they are collectively referred to as the year-end benefit or YED, authorized under RA number 6686 as amended by RA number 8441. Next is Productivity Incentive Benefit or PID. This is a cash award authorized under AO number 161 to recognize individual personnel productivity and performance which contributed to attainment of agency goals and targets. Next is overtime pay. So uh, government employees are required to render 40 hours of work in a week subject to the um, work schedule adapted by the agency's concerned. So through adequate planning, um, overtime work could be avoided kasi hindi, hindi, um, hindi, sa, so hindi lahat ng government agencies binabayaran yung overtime. Alam ko, dito na papasok si compensatory time off. So, Section 1 of AO 103 provides for the adoption of a scheme that will allow employees to be compensated two time or days off in lieu of overtime pay. So, ito yung magiging kapalit, imbis na babayaran ka ng overtime, sa so pag-overtime mo, magiging compensatory time off na lang, um, yun yung ipapalit for your, uh, pwede ka maging ma-excuse for, from reporting for work with full pay and benefits. Next is night shift differential pay. So this is a compensation premium granted to government personnel whose regular work hours fall fully or partly within 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. of the following day. So night shift uh, shall be given to government employees at a rate of 20% of their hourly basis rate of each hour of work performed from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Next is hazard duty pay. So this is a compensation premium granted to each official and employee actually assigned to and for performing duties in strike torn or embattled areas. Next is subsistence allowance. So subsistence allowance is, uh, is an allowance for meal or sustenance of government personnel who by the nature of their duties and responsibilities have to make their services available in their places of work even during meal times. Next is laundry allowance. So Laundry allowance is intended to defray the laundry cost incurred for uniforms of specific government personnel pursuant to Section 67, Chapter 7, Book 6 of EO Number 292. So next is Anniversary Bonus or AD. So this is a financial incentive authorized under AO number 263, dated March 28, 1996, to be granted to government employees on the, on the occasion of their agency's milestone year. So all government personnel, whether employed on full-time or part-time, under permanent, temporary, or casual status, elective or appointed, including contractual personnel whose employments are in the nature of regular employees who have rendered at least one year of service in the same agencies as of the date of milestone years and continue to be employed in the same government entities as of the occasion of their milestone anniversaries are covered by the anniversary bonus. Next is CNA or Collective Negotiation Agreement Incentive. So 
this is a cash incentive provided to the government employees concerned who have contributed either in productivity or cost savings in an agency in fulfillment of the commitments in the CMAs or the supplements thereto. Next is travel expenses. So this is to cover hotel or lodging rate, meals and incidental travel expenses, excluding transportation expenses going to and from the destination. So coverage dito yung government personal then and both from the national and local governments. Next is terminal leave and monetization of leave credit. So terminal leave, kaya na nabanggit ko kanina, this refers to the money money value of the total accumulated vacation and sick leave credits of an employee based on the highest salary received prior to or upon retirement or voluntary separation from the government service. Monetization of TIP credits, ito yung uh, payment in advance under the prescribed limits and subject to specified terms and conditions of the money of the money value of the vacation and sick leave credits of an employee upon his or her request without actually going on leave. So, last but not the least, the free quarter for certain government officials. So, three quarters. For government officials, refer to the free use of government-owned or leased place of lodgings, which may include telephone, water, and electricity for basic needs. So, um, the National Budget Circular Number 456, dated November 11, 1996, provides the guidelines on three quarters for certain governments government officials to implement the pertinent general provision of the annual DAA. So, I, that ends my presentation. Po. Sir Ariel, please take over. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Ma'am Shane. So, uh, once again, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dean. Good afternoon, classmates. So, this afternoon, I will be discussing the last three parts of the employment law and employees' rights. Employees rights. So we have the, the data protection and employee privacy, court practice and procedure, and last is young safety working conditions. So next slide, please. Mom Shane? Mom Shane? Mom Shane? Na next ko. Pa. Ay, hindi man naka naka stop siya. Ayan, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, data protection and employment policy. So, the collection and processing of personal information including employee data is governed by the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So, data privacy regulations are implemented by the National Privacy Commission. So it is an independent body created under the Republic Act number 10173 or the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So they are mandated to administer and implement, implement the provisions of the Act. So And also they are uh, mandated to monitor and ensure compliance of the country with international standards set for the data protection. So ano nga ba ang Data Privacy Act? So RA 10173, also known as the Data Privacy Act of 2012, is an act that, that seeks to protect the privacy of an individuals in the private and public sector. So while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. So it also regulates the collection, recording, organization, correction, retrieval, and erasure of personal data. So this act also ensures that the Philippines complies with the international standards set for data privacy through NPC or National Privacy Act. So both public and private entities have equal rights in terms of preserving their rights to privacy. 
So under the Data Privacy Act, an employer is the information controller. So in they are involved in controlling, collecting, holding, and processing the use of information about its employees. So every institution and organization is required by the commission to have an organizational, physical, and technical safety measure safety measures to protect the personal data. So now there are three different types of information that can be processed from a prospect employee. So these are, so we have the personal information, number two, privileged information, and last is we have the personal in sensitive information. So ano nga ba yung personal in information? So personal information is any information, whether recorded in a material form or not, from which the identity of the person is apparent or can be reasonably and directly be ascertained by the entity holding the information. So when put together with other information, it would directly identify an individual. So meaning, ito po yung mga informations that can be shared to a limited in individual, company, or institutions. So it do not necessarily constitute a risk or consequences. So ang pangalan po natin is personal information or sex is the personal information. So sa madaling salita, ito po yung mga inform, inform, information na maaring mag-ugnay sa pagkakakilanlan ng isang tao. So second is personal sensitive information. So on the other hand, these are information that can be shared to others. So uh, however, it has a corresponding risk and consequences. So ito yung mga klase ng information na dapat pinoprotektahan ng empleyado and his employer because it has a corresponding risk for identity thief, fraud, and something that can, that can be used against the person. So example of, of sensitive information are uh, SSS, SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth number, and previous health rec records. So and even yung uh, employee number. So with this information, madali na lang po ngayon gumawa ng mga peking IDs. So using our pertinent information na maaaring gamitin sa mga illicit activities. So employers should not divulge this information without the consent of his employees. So ipinagbabawal po ni Data Privacy Act ang pag-share ng personal information without, without the consent of the employee. So upon doing so, you will be violating the Data Privacy Act of 2012. So, and last is we have the privileged information. So, example naman po nito is yung uh, public officer given information in official confidence. So, yung mga public officers na may alam na information in their official capacity as a public officer should also not share information in terms of like budget and accounting supplies and other information relating to a particular organization. So next one, Shane. So now that we are done with the types of information, we will now proceed to the rights of the data subjects. So under the Data Pri Privacy Act, sino sino nga ba ang mga data subjects? So under Data Privacy Act, uh, it has been mentioned a lot of times. So who are the data subjects? So data subjects is basically you, it could be me, and it could also be anyone whose personal data are being processed, collected, and used. So what are our rights as data subjects? So ito po yung mga rights natin as stipulated in the RA 101733 uh, implementing rules and regulations. So we have the right to information, right to access, right to object. We also have the rights to damage, right to data portability, and, li and right to remove. So number one, we have the right to information. So we have the right to be informed that our data is, has, or shall be processed that, or shall be processed. So that is our basic rights. So we have the right to know the description of the personal information to be entered into the system the purpose of processing and the scope and method of the personal information processing. So the recipients or classes of recipients to whom they are or may be disclosed. So the identity, 
and the contact details of the personal information controller or its representative. And last, the period for which the information will be stored. Now, what does this all mean? So in practical terms for uh, government agencies, it means that you have the, to be ready to provide this information to the data subject. So this can, this can be in the form of uh, like privacy notice. So number two, we have the data, the data subject has also the right to object. So what does the, data, the right to object mean? So it means that kapag may changes in the policy or if there's a change in a way that you intend to use the data of your employee, then the data subject has the right to refuse or to limit the process that you are doing. So for example, kapag nagko-collect tayo ng data ng isang employee for a certain purpose, so let's say for providing benefits or processing of insurance, so, and then you decide to share that data with another government agency. So the data subject has, has the right to be notified for that fact. So, and if, and if the data subject refuses, then you should honor his rights. Now, do the employees have the rights to obtain copies of any personal information that, that is held by the company? So the answer is yes, because the data subject has the right to access upon demand of his information unless there is a justification for not giving in the data. So what can the, the data subject demands? So the data subjects can demand for personal data like the general contents of his data available in the organization and all the information in, related, in relation to the data subjects that the company is processing. So right to remove, erasure, or blocking. So the data subject has the right to request for the removal of his available data in the organization when the data subject deem that his personal data is no longer needed by the company. Of course, we also have the rights to damages. So this means that when the data subject has been injured or his rights has been violated, that results to an injury, then the National Privacy Con Commission can award indemnity or damages to the data subject. Last is the right to data portability. So now after learning all uh, about these rights, so as part of the priva privacy employee, my rights to be employer to monitor the emails or use of an employer's com computer system. So yes, the case allows when there is a presence or of a company policy regulating the use of office computers. So another question, may, karam may karapatan po ba si employer na i-control ang paggamit ng social media ng kanyang empleyado within or outside the workplace? So regulation on employees social media in the workplace is allowed. However, wala pa pong clear guidelines sa pag-regulate ng social media ng isang empleyado outside office premises. So, pero if makakapekto po ito, especially kapag may negative feedback sa isang particular na empleyado, and when the company or organization, organization's name is being dragged down, so pwedeng masibak or masispend ang isang empleyado for this particular act. So, next, Ma'am Shane. So, court practice and tribunals. So which courts or tribunals have jurisdiction to hear employment-related complaint, complaints? So for the public sector, we have Section 5 jurisdiction of the Civil Service Commission. So the Civil Service Commission shall hear and decide administrative cases or matters instituted by, by or brought before it. So including contested appointments and review, review decisions and actions of its officers and other government agencies. So, however, the Office of the Ombuds Ombudsman can investigate and prosecute on its own or on complaint by any person, any act or omission of any public officer or employee. So, when such act or omission appears to be legal, unjust, improper, or inefficient. So, under private sector naman po, on the other hand, we have the National Conciliation and Mediation Board. So, an attached agency to DOLE which is principally in charge of the settlement of labor disputes using conciliation, mediation, and promotion of voluntary approaches. So 
which procedures apply to employment-related complaints. So for both public and private sector, conciliation mediation is generally mandatory before a complaint can be, can proceed. So next, Mom Shane. So let's now proceed to uh, safety working conditions. So in the public, uh, private sector, safety and working conditions in private companies are being governed by RA 110158. So it is an act strengthening compliance with occupational safety and health standards and providing penalties for violations thereof. So it was signed by President Rodrigo Duterte last August 12, 2018. And thereafter, the Department of Labor and Employment issued an IRR, Department Order Number 198-18. So sino-sino nga ba ang saklaw ng batas na ito? So lahat ng pribadong establishment ay saklaw ng batas na ito, kabilang ang mga establishment na matatagpuan sa loob ng mga special economic zones, katulad ng PESA, airline agencies, uh, shipping companies, and the likes. So what are the duties of the employers and rights of employees under uh, Republic Act 110158? Next po, Ma'am Shane. So employers' duties includes provides a safe and healthy workplace through the following. So capacity building of all workers, including mandatory trainings, uh, use of devices, equipment with approved industry standards. So compliance with the requirements of the OSH standards, provision of information on OSH. On the other hand, employees' rights is to know the different types of hazards in the workplace. So be provided with training, education, and orientation to refuse unsafe work without threat or reprisal. OSH standards or compliance orders shall be penalized with not more than 100,000 daily until full compliance. So recon from the date of issuance of notice or results or compliance order. So may mga schedule of peace naman po sila per violation. So lowest being 20,000 pesos. So yung uh, unregistered na company sa dole. So repeated violation of the same prohibited act shall be penalized of the corresponding fine plus 50% for every instance of repeat violation. So when the violation exposes the worker to death, serious injury or serious illness, the, imp the imposable penalty shall be 100,000 pesos. Next, Mom Shane. So for the public sector naman po, uh, a joint CSE, a CSC, Civil Service Commission and DOH, and DOLI memorandum was issued to implement occupational safety and health standards. So CSC, DOH, DOLI joint memorandum, circular number one, uh, series of 2020, aims to institutionalize occupational safety and health in government workplaces to, pro to protect government workers from the dangers of injury, sickness or death, and to prevent loss or damage of properties through the adoption of safe and healthy working conditions. So the guidelines on OSH standard requires government agencies to establish their own OSH program. So create a safe and health committee and or a special investigation committee. So and appoint or designate a safe, safety health officer to ensure their compliance with OSH. So standards and promotion effective implementation of OSH in their workplaces. So next one, Shane. So safe working standards for government sectors include um, installation of adequate safety signs. So such as fire emergency or danger signs. So facilities for persons with disabilities and health clinic or treatment room. So regular practice of good housekeeping. 
such as eradication of stagnant water and proper waste disposal. So OSS standards, compliant building construction and maintenance. Number four, uh, we have also the provision of OSH, standard compliant personal protective equipment and devices. So proper handling use and storage of hazardous materials and implementation of an indoor air quality management program. And last is yung provision of support facilities such as uh, recreation areas, training rooms, and daycare. So as well as lactation, lactation station or lac for lactating mothers. So uh, that ends my presentation. Presentation po. Thank you very much for listening. Dean? Pwede magtanong? 